What's up with it, YouTube? I hope y'all doing all right today. Whether you're new here or not, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As you can tell by the title and the thumbnail of this video, today we're going to be doing like a vulnerable get ready with me. Um, I, Y'all know, I done did this video like two times now. And I try not to edit it too much because I want it to be real raw and just genuine. So I'm going to try not to ramble on too much. I'm just going to do a full get ready with me. Hair, makeup, outfit, everything. I'm going to um, get ready to make some content. I mainly want to talk about like just how my life is going to change. <laughs> uh, if you don't know, I am 38 weeks pregnant. And since it's like. At this point, like in real time, but by the time I'm seeing this, I'll be probably 40 weeks. But at this point, like it's Thursday, so I'm gonna be 39 weeks in the, in a few days. So, you know, <laughs> the time is coming. The time is coming. I'm very nervous and scared because for one labor like hello labor hurts <laughs> and even my doctor is saying like because she we at the point where um she's checking to see if i'm dilated and i remember she was checking me out with a finger in there like and i didn't even know because y'all my boyfriend with me was with me last time and i didn't even know that they stick their whole finger i'm thinking it's just her finger Y'all, this 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 woman sticks her whole hand in there. I did not know that. Your whole hand? That's the that's the kinky stuff, y'all. I don't know about all that, but <laughs> that's what she had did, and um, she was checking it, and it was so uncomfortable, and I was kind of squirming a lot, cause it just. I mean, I'm not used to. It. I guess sticking a whole hand up there, a hell, it was a it was a little much for me. And um, when she got done, she was like, "Yeah, I know it hurts. I know it's uncomfortable." And uh, when she got done, she was like, "Okay, girl, you gotta let my finger go." And I'm like, "What?" She said, "Girl, let go. You gotta let my let my finger go. I gotta put, get my finger." <laughs> I said, oh my God, that's embarrassing. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. The lady said I had um, squoze her finger up in there, trapped it up in there. She couldn't even get it out. But she said, oh girl, birth is going to be hard for you. <laughs> and that scared the living mess out of me. And every time I tell somebody like how far I am, they'd be like, oh, you right there. And you know, Oh, girl, uh, you want to go natural? And I'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, oh, girl, I pray for you. I don't want to hear that. Lord Jesus. Go scare a woman out of giving birth. My doctor and everybody who know me, I'm trying to do it natural without even medicine or nothing. So, yeah, I know, it's, I know it sounds bizarre considering the fact that I can't even get my service checked without doing too much but honestly i feel like our bodies was just built for this like i mean i don't i don't really feel comfortable putting drugs in my body to make something that's natural to us feel better and i know like that was our curse that eve brought on us with the uh child labor being super duper painful so I know it's like, oh, our bodies are meant to take that and da da da, because it's it's part of a curse. <laughs> because Eve wanted to go out and eat a fruit that she wasn't supposed to. But at the end of the day, like it's still what our bodies are meant to do is push out a baby. And I don't even take Tylenol. Like, yeah, I don't take medicine. I don't do medicine. And I'm not even bragging. But honestly, if I'm being honest, I hardly take my prenatals and my iron pills. Because I just don't, I don't, I don't do medicine, okay? And um, I wanted an all-natural birth. 
but as the time comes it just gets scarier and scarier because i know how i am and if i'm if i'm gonna keep it a book with y'all like this is not to bash my mama or nothing like me and my mama already done talked about this we already done worked it out i have no grudge against her she tried the best she could with what she had but like i know how damaged i i was being brought up and i know all the trauma that i went through and i know that my mama didn't intend on any of that happen and happening and i know she did the best she could and only that's the only thing people can do is the best that if i keep looking this way it's because i'm looking in this mirror y'all i'm sorry but um i know like that's the only thing people can do is the best they can and it's just scary to think that even the best i can can't protect my child from everything of the world like it can't protect him from just people can't protect him from thoughts can't protect him from I just can't, I can't protect him from everything is what I'm getting at. And it's so scary to think that uh, the time for me to face that and see that come to realization, the time for me to see that play out and all of that is just, it's coming faster and faster and faster. I'm excited to meet my son. I'm excited to finally be able to get my body back, of course. But I'm just not excited to, I'm excited to watch my son grow up and just, you know, see who he'll become and the kind of person he'll be. But I'm not excited to see what the world going to play into it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not excited to see all his, um, the trials and stuff that he'll have to go through just from being a black man or just from being whoever he'll be his personality or the way he'll look or you know something like that because y'all know people can be mean i was bullied for so many years just because my eyebrows was thin like people are mean and i know this and i really i really just y'all like when people be super close to like I don't know hurting me i feel like like bro i'm pregnant you could have hurt my son you don't even care like that's so inconsiderate and that right there that fires me up when people are being inconsiderate while i'm pregnant because i think about like you could have hurt my son and he could have had to come early and that it is that that like that's how i'll be thinking about it so imagine how i'm gonna be when he actually here and you actually do something to my son like <laughs> i don't play that like I'm just crazy overprotective and I know that and I know how crazy I can get and I know how crazy other people can get and I'm I'm just not excited to see who can get the craziest, you know? I'm just not excited to see my son in pain because I know it's coming and uh, it took me a while to just really, really grasp that, that no matter what I do, nothing nothing can like completely protect him from what the world has to offer like and that's just that and it, that scares me and i'm not ready for that and then it's like with him being a baby everything is so critical because i mean as a baby that's shaping you who you are that's shaping how you'll develop and with him not being in preschool, I have to, it's up to me to kind of make sure he hit those milestones. It's up to me to make sure that he is like, you know, having enough activity time, having enough learning time, having enough this much time, doing this and that and the third to make sure that his brain is developing right, to make sure he's getting enough tummy time today. Like, and I, as I've been doing so much research, like, I, I didn't schedule out like our day and everything. I already got like a whole routine, but, and I'm excited to do that with him. Like I'm excited to do all of this. It's just kind of nerve wracking and 
it's a lot of pressure knowing that I don't know I feel like with it being up to me and homeschooling him and stuff basically what you want to call it um it just scary to think that I could I could keep him from going to like preschool or I can keep him from going to kindergarten I don't know it's just it's just scary to think that it's up to me to make sure that he gets what he needs and I have no kind of background in child education I have no kind of background in raising a child well I mean I I almost basically kind of helped a lot raise my nephew but I don't know it's just like he he went to daycare so even if we just like even at the house if we just sat and did nothing with him and just watched tv he still would be getting everything that he needs to develop properly but with him being with me all the time not only do i have to make sure that i do that for him but i have to be entertained myself and have enough energy myself and have to have that motivation myself to just get up and have to do that every single day. It's a big responsibility and a big job. And it's kind of a, a love-hate relationship with it to where I'm I'm excited to just spend time and just have that one-on-one -on -one time with my son. Like, I'm so excited for that. But I'm not excited to mess up because I know it's coming. I'm not excited to, like, I don't know, because no, no mother intentionally screws up their child. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm just scared to screw him up. I'm just scared and I'm nervous. I'm nervous to push out a baby out of my vagina. I'm nervous to raise a child full, like full, full time. Like my nephew, okay, cool. You know, like I have him, I have my nephew a lot. Like I call him my son and I could say, I would I would confidently say like you know yeah I helped raise him like you know he basically my son that I didn't have to pay for you know what I mean uh he's he's like my son without all the cons of what a son comes with which is like or what really just what a child comes with which is the money <laughs> Ooh, child them things are expensive and I raised him you know what I mean so it's it's like. It's nothing like that because it's like now I, I don't know how to explain it y'all. I just know I'm nervous and I'm scared for my life right now. But I'm also happy and excited right now because I mean I'm going to have a lifelong best friend. If you know me then you know I have no friends and I'm, I'm, I'm a super duper to myself ducked off lonely person so the fact that i'm gonna have a best friend all day every day it's kind of like oof, because i'm not used to being around nobody all day every day <laughs> but i don't know with it being my son i feel like it'll be a little bit better than just a random person or like a friend from school or something that i get to be with all day every day and I don't know. I just I I'm, I'm just excited to have that bond and grow a friendship and a bond. Like I know I'm I'm going to be his parent, y'all. Trust me. I'm not just looking to be his friend. I'm going to also be a parent when I need to be. I'm not going to completely neglect my responsibility so I can have a friend over a child. But I know how to my one thing my mama did teach me through what she was doing, how she raised us, is that you can definitely be a friend and a parent. Like, there were plenty of times where she had to buckle down and be our mama, but there was also plenty of times where she was my only friend. A lot of times. Majority of the time, she was my only friend. This is a lot of pressure. But um, my preacher was speaking on it, actually. He was like, you know, as parents, we try our best and we don't want our child to get hurt or nothing or go through this or nothing like that. Uh, but they're going to they're gonna go through it because the world is a wicked place. You know what I mean? So he was like, but that's where God come in the picture at. 
because he is there to comfort your child and hold your child when when they need it. And that that made me feel a whole lot better about stepping into parenthood because it made me realize like it's not all up to me like I'm like I'm thinking it is like you know excluding my um my boyfriend of course. He's all the way there y'all. I thank the Lord for him. But um it's not just up to a flawed person. We're all flawed. So it's just not up to a flawed human to raise my child. And that was like my biggest fear because it's like I'm flawed myself. I don't know everything. The thing that I'm not the only one, you know, raising my child. It's not just people who can make mistakes. It's also a perfect a perfect force beyond humans or be, beyond a person that's also uh, loving my child, that's also watching over my child, that also, you know, cares about my child unconditionally, even more than I do, because we're not even capable of the kind of love that God has for us. So the fact that somebody a force a force cares about my child like that that has as much power as he does that is like reigning over everything the fact that he feels stronger in a good way about my child and he picks up where i fall short it comforts me knowing that i'll i'll have that yeah that's kind of how i'm feeling about parenthood but y'all about this um these uh expenses oh y'all when i tell you having a child is freaking expensive having a child is freaking expensive we still have a lot of stuff that we need to get um i think it's like maybe 500 or so dollars worth of stuff and that's after like that's not even including the pump because i was just gonna wait to get the pump because i wanted to uh like straight breastfeed for the first three months or really until he started getting teeth but probably to uh the first three months because um after those three months, we're, we're quarantining for three months. And after those three months, that's when he'll be able to be, you know, go over to his dad's house on the weekends and stuff like that. So, of course, I'm going to have to pump to stock up milk for over the weekend. Y'all, God has really been testing um, our faith a lot. Um, either that or God is going to do something and the devil is just trying to get to us. I don't know who it is, but somebody is testing my faith and my boyfriends. Um, financially, it has been extremely hard if I'm being completely transparent with y'all. Like, not having a job, it really, you know, it's nice to be able to work when I want to, but what's not nice is when I want to work, but I can't because I just simply don't have clients. And it's like, I want to work. You know what I mean? I want clients, but up until recently, I have not been having any clients. Like, y'all, since that baby shower, up until, like, this week, I have not been having any clients. And everything has been on my boyfriend to just get all of this stuff. And, like I said, it's, it's not cheap at all. So, you know, his job already isn't, like the highest paying job you know what i mean it's a good paying job but it's not just the highest paying job that you can get and um he has another son that uh he actually like uh was starting school so he had to take him school shopping which we all know can hurt hurt somebody pockets <laughs> okay and then um Oh, y'all, this is kind of lying. I'm going to have to mix this in or something. And then he had to get him a car because the car he had just, like, the air had stopped working. The radio had stopped working. 
it didn't have a title so he couldn't have tags on it so he was getting pulled over a lot and he was having a lot of trouble like like the car like he had to do a lot of repairs on it like the car was just it, it was going through with y'all so it was just time to get rid of it but with him having to work every day and you know his son other his first son staying in shreveport he had to uh he had to get some kind of transportation and uh all of this was like in in the midst of us trying to get the last of our baby stuff and in the midst of me not having no clients so with it being all up to him and then he having all this other stuff and he just got a house that he's trying to get prepped for so um his son both of them really can just you know have a house to go to his house right now is under a lot of construction and, and like he's redoing a lot of stuff because it's a pretty old house it's actually used to be like a family house but he bought it when his uh grandma died and so now he's just trying to upgrade it a little bit and um it it takes a lot of money of course but he just wants like a, a a house that his kids can go to that he can go to like he don't work so hard to buy this house and now it's hard for him to stay in it and work on it because we got to get all this baby stuff and recently it's been raining a lot and with his job Y'all, his job, when it rains, he cannot go to work because he does, like, construction work. So, he, he's not able to go to work when it rains, which means he don't get paid. It's been raining a lot, so he hasn't been even making as much money as he was before. And, y'all, at that moment, <laughs> at that moment, it seemed like that's when clients started rolling in. It's like God is testing us, like... When he when he had the days and like he had the money coming in and steady income, I had nothing. Like at some point it was both of us pulling in some way, but I had nothing. And then we got to a point to where he's uh, having rainy days. Like he's still bringing in a good amount on his end, but now I'm able to put in a lot more. And um, I feel like God is testing our face just enough to like. We getting what we need, but he making us, he making us cry for it, y'all. When I tell y'all, I've been stressing. I didn't know how we was going to get the rest of this stuff. And, um, it's just been, uh, real stressful financially trying to get everything that we need and want for the baby. But nevertheless, he is going to pull through, but with all of that plus the like the my my due date coming up really soon and having to give birth really soon and all of that y'all i'm i'm trying my best to just live because you know they be like oh don't stress don't don't have doubt believe in god and stuff and it's that's a lot easier said than done like I have faith in God. I be, like I believe in God. I know He always gonna pull through. But at the end of the day, they don't make no situation anybody is going through any less scarier than it really is. It gives you, it makes you a little bit more content knowing that you know you have God on your side. But it's still scary. They don't take away all of your fears or nothing. And people like expect expect you to just like you know oh well god got you and then boom you happy again when that's not really the case uh at least not for me i would love for that to be the case but if i'm being super honest and transparent that's not me right now i know deep down in my heart yes god is gonna come through for me but But I'm also just really, somebody's at the door. I think that's my Amazon packet. And you know what? I'm going to stay patient and I'm going to just finish my makeup, finish up this video before I go get it. But y'all, when I tell you I've been anxious on that package, okay? 
That is my Amazon packet. Oh, I want to go get it so bad. Oh, I want to go get it. Oh, I want to go get it. Oh, uh, nobody better steal it. If somebody steals somebody baby stuff, they just trifling. Like, especially over here because ain't nobody else pregnant. So, <laughs> what you even steal it for? <laughs> Nobody better not steal my baby stuff. If somebody steal my baby stuff, I'm going off on everybody in the neighborhood. But anyway, yeah, like I was saying, it's so much, it's it's a lot easier said than done to just blindly have faith. Like, that's every Christian's goal. That's definitely my goal, to just blindly have faith in God. But... It gets scary, y'all, because he be he be he be testing you. Like he be like, yeah, I, I I got faith, and he be like, oh yeah, let's see. And it's like you don't want to look at what you're going through, but that's when that's all you can really see. It's kind of hard not to. But I also know what he's brought me through before. I also know, like when. When you're just looking at stuff that's happening over and over again, it's scary. Like, oh, man, you know, my boyfriend, he's having all these rainy days. And, oh, man, my clientele is low and all of this. But, honestly, y'all, if you just sit back and look at the facts of everything, it'll help you to stop panicking. Like, to think that I got everything that I've gotten thus far with the kind of income that we're bringing in together, it's like... <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, just look at the facts. You know, sit back and look at what he's done. You know, like, I don't know how to explain it. Just look at look at what it is, but don't look at what it is. Like, we can just get overwhelmed by the cons of a situation that we just overlook the facts of a situation. Like, yeah, all this bad stuff is happening. But at the end of the day, all of our stuff is still getting taken care of. So... What are you really scared for? You know what I mean? Yeah, this was a real quick makeup look. I wanted to keep it pretty natural because I am going to be filming what y'all already said, which is something else I want to talk about, y'all. So, a while ago, y'all know, I, I, I don't know if y'all, well, yeah, y'all know if y'all been watching my channel. I started back doing hair, but it was not because I wanted to. It was because I had to because I couldn't get no job and I had a baby on the way. Still got a baby on the way. So, um, I just decided that it would be best if I would just go ahead and start back doing hair. So, I've always just been in love with doing hair. I never fell out of love with like doing actual hair what i fell out of love with was dealing with people being no shows and being inconsiderate and complaining about my price here and having the fact that i had to do it out the kitchen and everything that's what i kind of got tired of but i never got tired of actually doing hair and um when i started back doing hair because i had to i kind of fell my love for it again just kind of spark up because being pregnant I had an excuse to do hair on the couch while my client sat on like a um y'all saw my setup in like a vlog um a few vlogs ago how my um setup was with the uh couch cushion couch cushion in front of the uh couch and with me being pregnant that was like the perfect excuse to be able to do that which made doing hair super duper comfortable, super duper convenient. And, you know, it was nice or whatever. But I was like, y'all, if y'all been watching my, my vlogs, then y'all know like the kind of roller coaster ride I've been going through. Like I when I was like really just searching for my purpose and not just what I wanted to do to make money, what can make the most money, and I was genuinely just searching for my purpose. I knew I wanted to do something with mental health, but I was not sure about like being a therapist or a counselor or anything like that. But I knew, I knew, I knew it had to be mental health because that's just who I am and what I like. And so then I had ran into coaching and I was like, oh my gosh, coaching. Yes, this is what I'm meant to do. Like I got to be a coach and 
I looked into it. I was getting into it. I actually had a couple of friends who would uh, help me, who said they would help me, but only one actually like really came through. But what I did was I called her and then we talked and it was like a little coaching session, like a little test run just for review. And she did say, she was like, you know, that really helped me. I didn't even know I needed that. Like, you really did help me is what she told me. And I was like, yeah, girl, you know. And so when she said that, I was just like, oh, yeah, you know. And then the fact that it was so easy to get that, I don't know, y'all. It was just, I was like, I just felt like, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. I need to be a coach. I want to be a coach. And then. I started doing a little bit more research, just trying to perfect my craft and everything. And as I was doing that, I just kind of got this doubt. Like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, I knew I wanted to do mental health, but I just wasn't sure if that was, if that was the road that I needed to be taking. And so, uh, when I started back doing hair... It just came to me to mix hair and mental health. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. I was like, how am I going to do this? But then I ran across this podcast. Shout out to this podcast. It's um, Know For Sure by B. Simone and Megan Brooks. Uh, basically, they're like, they started off with these cards that um it's like you you it basically um starts conversation like these conversation starters and they have different editions like best friends strangers couples and you basically just kind of learn more about a person they even have a healing edition where i guess it gets more into like healing a person or whatever but when I saw those cards, I was like, ooh, you know what? I can just use those cards when I'm doing hair. You know what I mean? Like, when I do hair, oh, we're going to pull some cards, and that's going to be what we talk about. And with the cards being the kind of cards that they are, they always lead into, like, um, really deep and engaging conversation. So I was like, yeah, this is perfect. Because I'm I'm not that social. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not that social. But being social is a big part of a service business. Because people don't just come back for your good skills. Because at the end of the day, somebody, at, when it comes to skill, somebody is, is going to be just as good as you. And somebody is always going to be better than you. Somebody is always going to be cheaper than you. Whatever the reason, like, the whatever, whatever stands out about your service, uh, other than like the actual customer service, somebody is going to be more of that than you. They're going to be cheaper. Like I just said, they're going to be cheaper. They're going to be, uh, more skilled. They're going to be faster. Like they're, there's somebody, they're going to be better than you in at your craft than you are. It's in some kind of way, whatever is drawing your client in, but you have to be able to hold a client by those communication skills like that's what really keeps a client coming back because you can scroll on facebook and find five different people who can do the same hairstyle the exact same way so it's less about at this point like it's 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 less about the skill now and more about the customer service and i was like y'all i don't I don't too much talk to people. I don't, I'm very antisocial. And it's, uh, I have, uh, like, people scare me. <laughs> I've had a really bad experience with people, and it's, it's really scary to, um, just, just thinking about people and having to talk to people and deal with people and all of that that kind of scares me so when i found those found out about those cards i was like yes it'll make everything easier it'll make the conversation go smoother and just flow effortlessly and it'll it'll cause people to have a deep conversation with me which is what coaching is all about deep conversating to get like to a root of a problem and help somebody 
just better themselves. And I feel like when you get in those kind of deep conversations, that's the opportunity to give somebody some kind of advice or to just help somebody out in general. And I was like, that aligns perfectly with my purpose. Like, it's kind of like therapy. I'm also doing hair. Like, it makes sense. It just makes sense to do that. And so, period. Ooh, ooh, y'all, that was straight five. Ooh. And me being as clever as I am, I thought of the name uh, for uh, for my business to be my hair business to have like a mixture of mental health and therapy and just locks because I wanted I want to niche down to locks because I just love locks those are my favorite and honestly um I just it take me about six hours to do individual braids I'm we not finna sit here and talk for six hours. It's not that I don't want to. It's just I don't think that we can do that. <laughs> and so, you know, we're just going to keep it at locks because they're the fastest. There was a few times where I was kind of scared to pursue it because I, wanted, uh, I want to make it into something kind of big. But y'all with monkeypox and stuff, I just was like, um, do I really want to have a service business? Cause child, it's scary out here, you know, especially with a baby and stuff. And having these people in my house, I don't know, it just seemed kind of scary. But uh, it seemed like my passion kind of fluctuate with my clientele. Like when I have a lot of clients, it's like, oh yeah, this is what I got to be doing. This is what I really want to do. But when I don't have a lot of clients and I'm going weeks with no clients at all it it can get really like discouraging like you know did i have a good week or is this really what i need to be doing but even though these pat this past week i have been pretty busy with it i know i just said like oh yeah when i get busy this one but i don't know like my passion i just feel like i want to go full throttle into it I, fin I am finna take a three month break though. Me and my baby is quarantined for three months once I have him before I start doing hair again. But I don't know. I just have that strong urge again to just go full into uh, doing hair, especially locks. And I've just been building my social media pages. I've been, you know, just getting everything prepared for when I do come back, cause I'm, I'm so ready to just really step into it. And I be having like these visions of me when I'm like stepping into it. I don't know how to explain that. Like when I'm in my prime time and I'm actually doing it and pursuing it and everything. And I just have those visions and I'm just like, yes, <laughs> I cannot wait to just be able to just throw myself into um doing hair once this three month break is over like yeah I'm, I'm ready to just elevate in 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 my hair business i'm ready to just take it to a new level i'm ready to make it into like a real full-time real career like i'm just ready to take it there i'm just taking my time waiting on god just kind of going off my instincts of when is the best time to do it and today i just felt inspired to just start taking it there so i'm making um that's what i'm getting ready for i'm making content it's getting serious y'all and i'm ready for it i'm just ready to step into my purpose I'm ready to see what God has for me. I'm ready to live life the way God wrote it down for me to live it, okay? Let me put on this mascara real quick, y'all. This is the look, y'all. I look super bronzed. 
And for my hair, um, I think I want to just keep it like down for like a little side part. And just kind of took this right here because I want I want something to really show off my locks, being that it's for my lock page. So I don't know if I want to wear them down or kind of like just. And a half up, half down. Because when I wear my half up, half down, I be having it spiky. Which is like the look for dreads. Their Y2K kind of vibe. But I feel like this gives it a little more ladyish kind of. You know what I mean? I mean... Let's try to half a pep down. It honestly depends on what I wear. And I wanted to wear some kind of flowy. Something like maybe like my black uh, long dress. And this style definitely does not go with that. wrap my dread to cover that pink up by the way so don't be alarmed by the pink I don't know I'm feeling it okay I'm kind of feeling it <laughs> yeah I think I might do this but now I gotta go find a bobby pin to wrap these around so yeah I'm gonna go find a bobby pin wrap these around Go find a fit, get these Amazon packages that I'm really excited to go get, <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back to uh, show y'all like the final look of everything. Okay. All right, y'all. So this is the fit. Um, I I just got on my socks because the bottom half of my body is not gonna be showing. It's just gonna be really this part of my body that's showing. Maybe down here. I don't know. I gotta set everything up first, but. This is the complete look. I really hope y'all liked the video. I hope y'all enjoyed me just chit-chatting about life, upcoming life, <laughs> and what I'm looking forward to and everything. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for my next video.